The end of our foundation is the knowledge of causes and secret motions of things and the enlarging of the bounds of the human empire to the effecting of all things possible. This quote is not from Starfield. It certainly sounds like it. Enlarging the bounds of the human empire can easily be a stand-in for space exploration, but it's actually from an unfinished 1620s manuscript by philosopher Francis Bacon. The name of that manuscript? The New Atlantis, the very same name as Starfield's capital city. That's not a coincidence, and there's a lot to unpack there, from the design of the city itself to its various residents. So let's do that. Let's explore New Atlantis. Before we get started, I'm just going to clarify that spoiler tag a little bit. If you've completed even the first main mission of Starfield, you should be good. I'm only talking about your very first visit to New Atlantis, which is basically right at the beginning of the game after some tutorial stuff. Okay, I'm going to take off now. Pun acknowledged. When you hear the name Atlantis, you probably picture the mythical lost city. I've actually talked about that exact thing on this channel before. Thanks, Indiana Jones. Here's your shining city. There's something to be said for the thrill of discovering a lost civilization like that. That's where Francis Bacon's story begins. So, class, let's go over the Cliff's Notes version of the New Atlantis together. It starts with a group of sailors leaving Peru, and they get lost in the South Sea. It's here they find an uncharted island paradise. At first, the residents of the island don't want them to land, but they do offer to resupply the lost ship. They make this offer with a letter written in Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and Spanish, which piques the curiosity of everyone on board. Eventually, the island residents do permit the sailors to dock, as long as they swear they aren't pirates and haven't committed any crimes in the last 40 days. One of the island officials brings them in, but refuses to accept a pistol in exchange because that would be considered a bribe. Hmm, that sounds like something I should keep in mind for later. Some of the sailors are sick so the islanders take care of them. The rest essentially go on a tour of the island, learning about its customs and infrastructure. This is where Bacon begins laying out his vision of a utopia. The island's name is Ben Salem, and it was once ruled by a king named Salomona. The spelling is different, but the reference to the wise biblical king Solomon is very clear. The island has been isolated for 37 years by this point, and in that time some important groups have arisen. These include the House of Strangers, who govern the island, and Solomon's House, a group of scientific researchers. In Bacon's perfect society, there is a constant drive for scientific research and human progress. Considering the man is often called the father of the scientific method, that checks out. He was also a devout Anglican, so the biblical sounding names and the fact that the residents of Ben Salem are distinctly Christian shouldn't be a surprise either. That also sounds like something I should keep in mind. As it stands, these practices do seem to have turned Ben Salem into that perfect society that so many of us seek. As the book says, you shall understand that there is not under the heavens so chaste a nation as this of Ben Salem, nor so free from all pollution or foulness. Now, perhaps things would have gone bad later in the story, but since the manuscript is unfinished, we'll never know. What we can do, however, is compare this vision of Utopia with what Starfield has going on. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size, but also in the amount of custom art, crowds, and quests. Browder's quote there is spot on. The scale of Starfield's New Atlantis is enormous, particularly the commercial and residential districts. But more than that, it's cohesive. The districts don't feel like they're laid out randomly there's an order to their arrangement. You can look down at the starport from higher elevations, and you can see the fin of the central mast building from any part of the city. Mast, or military administrative and scientific triumvirate, is the heart of the city. It's here that the UC Vanguard recruits soldiers, elected officials govern the people, and researchers develop technology that furthers humanity's exploration of the stars. Doing all that demands a collaborative, humanitarian effort. There's a reason you see diverse faces living together in this city, and why these ministries are all built atop each other in the same tower. 
The enlarging of the bounds of human empire requires all types of humans. That defining quote from Bacon's book is easy to compare to Starfield's New Atlantis, and there are several specific descriptions that the two settlements share. The story describes high towers, great lakes, wells and fountains, spacious houses, chambers of health, orchards and gardens, and houses of math and science. The facilities here at Mast are the best in the galaxy. There are also plenty of modern amenities that don't have a direct comparison to the manuscript, but fit in with this luxurious view of utopia. These include coffee houses, art dealers, and upscale restaurants. Oh, hey, look at that. Solomon's Reserve. That's the name of the founder of the Freestar Collective, and it also seems like a pretty deliberate choice. Hey, speaking of Bible references... I may not always have the perfect advice for people, but I try to just be here for them. Religion, or in some cases the lack thereof, is also a key component of New Atlantis's mission. Universalism, a belief in searching for God among the stars, is presented in a calm and genuinely caring manner. On the other side of the coin, you have the House of the Enlightened, a distinctly atheist group that focuses on intellectualism. Then you have a completely different coin altogether, the Great Serpent, a more extremist religion propagated by House Veyrune. This very Dune-sounding group actually went on a crusade before the events of the game, and while there's peace in the universe now, there's still a stigma around this faith thanks to some remaining zealots. There's a reason the first follower of the Great Serpent you'll likely meet is Mirza, while she's in jail. I am a prisoner, trapped by a weak people who do not kill their enemies when they should. Let me tell you, as a man of faith myself, that kind of extremism is really not good. So while the Sanctum Universum and House of Enlightenment offer the residents of New Atlantis the opportunity to embrace religion or look away from it in favor of humanism, you won't find a temple of the Great Serpent here. That's probably for the best. Bacon focused on a combination of Christianity and applied science, but Bethesda's New Atlantis offers religious options while still working toward a common goal. Sounds like they've got this whole utopia thing pretty figured out then. Well, not quite. The Universalists get some prime real estate in the city's embassy district, but the House of Enlightenment is shoved underground. Regardless of which camp you fall into, that's objectively uneven. And as I'm sure many of you have noticed, I've yet to even mention the well, which is essentially the city's unlisted, forgotten, poor district. If folks are willing to pay a little to have some place to feel safe and get a decent meal, well then, we'll sure take it. Let's compare one of its landmarks to Whetstone, the swanky restaurant above ground. That place is all about perfect steaks and wine pairings, while Kay's house and the well exists just to give hungry people a place to eat and feel safe. There's an immediate, stark contrast between life down here and life up there in the quote-unquote presentable part of New Atlantis. The meager homes here are a far cry from the nice apartments you'll find in Athena Tower or the other skyscrapers in the residential district. Meanwhile, the people up there get good healthcare via Reliant Medical, while the med bay down here is scraping by with whatever old supplies still work. And it's here because not everyone in New Atlantis can afford Reliant Medical. Picking up the leftovers that topsiders don't want is how things go for the less fortunate people in the well. You can see it in the vendors, too. Surplus electronics and security gear are only available here because sometimes things slip through the cracks, as they say. Wink wink, nudge nudge. And then you've got the Trade Authority, which despite the name, doesn't appear to have any real authority over anything. The team there just smuggles stuff in and out of the colony without UC security blowing up their spot. In fact, you can participate in this within moments of landing at the starport. I mentioned earlier that the city has an art shop, and proprietor Samson sees you as the perfect person to pick up some of that duty-free art for his collection. So almost right away, you can see that this new Atlantis isn't so crime-free, compared to the one in the story that was free from all pollution or foulness. I mean, you can also sign up to be a part-time cop within moments of setting foot on the planet. Part-time security officer. The position's very flexible. Uh, you can basically work whenever you're available. No pressure. Wow, that is a very casual way of putting the law in someone's hands, huh? If this place were so perfect, why would it even need cops? These flaws in the system are all over the place if you pay attention. Cornelius, the owner of Outland, has never been to space, despite selling all sorts of astronaut gear. 
He's a perfect representation of the bubble that the privileged residents of New Atlantis live in. Meanwhile, the UC Distribution Center is behind. Not good when you're supposed to be the commercial hub of the galaxy. And if you visit Argos, the company that hired you before the start of the game, you'll learn that corporate cares a lot more about profits than people. We don't normally offer contractors the same benefits we offer full-time employees. But don't worry, you can still squeeze some extra cash out of Argos if you ask. Remember when I said that in Bacon's New Atlantis, the people refused bribes? Their reasoning is based on this quote. He must not be paid twice for one labor. But I think we all know that asking for extra money is par for the course when completing a quest in a Bethesda game. You've got to put those speech skills to use. Oh, that reminds me, you haven't actually paid me for playing any of these characters yet, and this suit's getting really hot, so if we could j Anyway, I'm not saying Bethesda shouldn't let you push for those things, nor prevent you from committing outright crimes. I mean, I accidentally stole from the cops right after I agreed to do some work for them. Hand it over, now! Keep it moving. This player agency is important, and I'm not here to criticize Bethesda for how they presented New Atlantis. In fact, I believe they succeeded in creating the exact thing they wanted to make. While Francis Bacon's New Atlantis was an island utopia that worked for everyone, Starfield's New Atlantis doesn't. For every beautiful building and successful business in the commercial district, there's a squalid corner and a shop barely scraping by in the well. I didn't want to create a list of rules for a utopia for this video, but equal treatment and status are chief among them. This city doesn't meet that criteria. So why draw the comparison? If my whole deal with this YouTube channel is to be positive, why would I point out these flaws? Well, aside from the fact that it's fun to compare games to literary works, there's a lesson to be learned here. And it's one I touched on with Stray as well. A perfect society isn't perfect until it's perfect for everyone. That takes constant effort. The well got that way because people forgot about the original ship that landed here. Other cracks in the system, like distribution delays and crime, happened for the same reason. People stopped paying attention to the needs of others. There's a lesson to be learned there. A lesson of persistence. Call it idealistic if you want. But we improve ourselves by dreaming. Obviously, we're not living in outer space just yet, but let's make sure to take care of our fellow humans on Earth now. Maybe someday we'll make it out there. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what Framework is doing, definitely hit that subscribe button in the middle. It would help me an awful lot if you do. And if you want to see what we've already cooked up, you can hit that link on the far left. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.